is the last Friday before our assessments. And I hope that you will practice drawing skills during the weekend because on the 24th, you are writing new assessments. Now, let us revisit drawing skills. Um, we are not going to We are, we, we, we are going to take it upon ourselves as grade sevens to practice these strong skills at home because normally in the classroom, you do these strong skills thoroughly. And in technology, what we learn is practical skills and practice is what gives you perfection in whatever you're doing, you have to practice many times so that you will know that you are ready for assessments. <coughs> in grade, I'm sorry. In grade seven, we are required to do amongst other drawings that we must do. The site of a 3D object. So we will be given a 3D object like this and we will be required to draw one side of that object. Right. Um, in other words, we are moving from three-dimensional drawing to two-dimensional drawing. Sometimes we move from two-dimensional drawing and develop to three-dimensional drawing. And we have practiced, amongst others, the skill of drawing oblique, because in grade eight, we must be able to draw oblique. So in our design process, in the design skill, we are in the design phase of the design process, we are required to draw freehand sketches so it's another skill that I have shared with you in these lessons, the skill of sketching. You need to know when you are designing, you have to use sketch lines. You need to know how to use sketch lines and develop from the sketch lines to the solid line or the outline. So that is the first thing that you do in the design process. You start by sketching. But we don't just draw at random. We have to develop drawing skills. Please pay attention to the drawing skills that we are sharing with you in these lessons because it is the drawing skills that will take you forward in the other grades. And it is the basic drawing skills that you will need in your engineering studies. You know, technology is engineering at the primary school. So you need to know these skills so that when you develop further in FET, you know that you have learned these skills from grade seven. So one of these skills is two-dimensional drawing. When you take one side, of this cube, this, this part only is two dimensional. And this is two dimensional. But collectively, when you combine them, when you join them together, it is this three dimensional object. We have used different colors here to show the different sides of this item. Now, you may be required, you are required in grade eight to be able to draw one side only, but you don't just draw anyhow, you draw in the way that we are teaching you. Now, this is an isometric block. You, have, you are doing in grade eight oblique drawing. But 3D oblique drawing has in GT oblique and isometric. So we have just taken this isometric cube so that you can see. 
the size that you see here is the top view. Then, <coughs> I'm sorry, using an arrow, you can de determine whether this is your, your front. So in your, in your assessments, you may be given an object 3D and then they show you that with an arrow that this is the front. Or maybe they say this is the front. So between these two sides, anyone can be determined to be called the front. Now, we must be able to draw 2D any side of the object that you'll be given. It can be the top side, depending on the instruction. It can be the top side, the front, the side, the back, right side, or even the bottom. You can be required to do that. So that is where you apply your drawing skills that you learn in grade seven. <coughs> now, we call this kind of drawing, this uh, two-dimensional drawing, we call it in technology, we call it orthographic projection. Don't be frightened by this big word because you guys, you are growing to be engineers. So you use such fancy words as orthographic projection, okay? I want you to learn this word from today, okay? Orthographic projection. But I promise you, because this word is, I'm not going to, um, you know, we grade seven teachers, we don't ask this word in tests. I'm just sharing it with you because it's what we are doing actually. Its correct word is orthographic projection, okay? So you must tell your parents that you know orthographic projection now. The word orthographic comes from two words. Ortho, meaning looking straight at a flat face of an object. And graphic, meaning a drawing, okay? So when you are looking, some, and, and when you are looking at something straight in its face, you are looking at it at an ortho angle. So when someone is looking you straight in the eyes, they are looking at you at an ortho angle. Hmm? You didn't know this before, but now you are going to speak like an engineer. All right? So ortho means looking straight at the face. I'm sorry about that. It just keeps jumping into my screen. Okay? Um, ortho means looking straight at a flat face of an, of an object. Graphic means a drawing. So orthographic projection means that this object, although it is standing in front of us at an angle, but when we draw it, we turn around the face so that it faces the reader, okay? Just like we do when we start drawing the oblique view. Now, let us see how many faces we see on this one. Let us say the green, I'm, I'm sorry, the red side is the, the red side is the front. If we say the red side is the, is the front, then how many sides are we seeing? I'm telling you, this red one is the front. So can you tell me the other sides you are seeing? <clears throat> Which other sides are you seeing? Okay, what we are seeing here is the front, the side, and the top. Okay? We are seeing the red one is the, the, the front. That's my cursor. I keep losing my cursor. The front, the yellow one is the side, and the blue one is the top. Those are the sides that we normally deal with when we are 
drawing two dimensional. But in grade seven, we can just ask you to, to draw even the, the base and the back and the right side, just to see if you can draw one face two dimensional. <clears throat> but normally in orthographic drawing, we deal with these sides that we can see. This means that you will look at an object from different sides and make separate drawings of what you see. Okay, you see three sides of this box. Now, when we have to draw this box two dimensional, and I hope you did that in term one, you only draw one side, that's all. You only draw one side. The top view, this is the top view. Okay? If your teacher is asking you to draw the top, only the top view two dimensional, you see how it's standing on this 3D object. It's standing skew. But when you are drawing it 2D, you draw it straight. You draw it straight and it is facing you like auto. It is an orthographic image of the top view. Then you can be asked maybe to draw the front. Let's see. Oh, the side. The side, when you look at it on this three dimensional object, the side is skew. You see this line is skew. But when you draw it in grade seven, you draw it straight you see this side is facing the reader you draw it straight that is the correct way of drawing two-dimensional from three-dimensional two-dimensional you draw like this you just follow the instruction what did they say i must draw they say you must draw the left side view then you draw it like this okay this is the left side view it is the side view but you know um the side that we have drawn here is that we don't see the right side but we know it's there remember the first drawing the cube i showed you we blew it up so that you can see that and um, there are other faces when you draw them you draw them straight then it is two-dimensional the same thing goes for the front view. Remember, I told you about the arrow. I said, when you are given a 3D object to draw, to draw two-dimensional, you're given a three-dimensional object to draw two-dimensionally, you are going um, to find um, an arrow, which is going to tell you which side is the front so i told you the front can be this one or can be this one it just depends on where the arrow is that is what you will you will regard as your front so the front view at any time can be the side view depending on the arrow so we have just drawn the side view the fact the front view you see it's a rectangle and it is not skewed it is facing the reader I hope this is very easy. But let us look at the planes, okay? Um, just imagine that this object is resting on this. We are seeing this object against these planes. Okay, let us just assume that these planes are mirrors. Okay, so when you lift this object and you suspend it in the air, this mirror, this horizontal plane, it reflects this shape of the object. That's what you know. So if I can be asked to draw the bottom 
view of this object, I would draw this. Even if I didn't see this plane, I would look at, at the object like a person who knows technology, and then I would decide that, oh, I see this shape on, in the, at the bottom will be like this, so I would draw this. And people would see that I really understand two-dimensional drawing. You see, from three-dimensional to to two-dimensional. This is two-dimensional, but the object itself is three-dimensional. Now, when you look at the object from this side, I said, I will say this a mirror. like this so i'm going to draw it as the back side my internet is unstable i hope you can hear me hello can you still hear me and also looking at this side this side will be reflected like that on this plane so the two-dimensional kind of drawing is is based on the principle that you are looking at one side draw only that side okay if you are looking at this side if you are looking at one side you only draw that side only of the 3d object okay so that is what we do in a grade eight, in, in grade seven, I mean. So in our workbooks, we are given a cupboard in our workbooks. This cupboard is three dimensional, if you look at it. It is three dimensional because we can see the top side, the side, the left side, and the front. Now, we are asked as grade seven to draw one dimension only, one face of the cupboard. So uh, we are instructed to draw the front of the cupboard. Now, what do we see? We look at only the front. We know this cupboard is three-dimensional, but we look at only the front. There's this door, okay? We see this line, this horizontal line, and this vertical line. We know there are hinges here, and these are doors. And this is what we see. So this is one face that you are going to draw then it is divided by this line in the middle. So this is it. This is our two-dimensional drawing of this three-dimensional cupboard. And we are asked to draw only one side there. And maybe we are given the correct measurements. Obviously, we are given the correct measurements. Now, grade seven. When you are required to draw two-dimensional, or even when you are required to draw oblique, you must dimension your drawing neatly. So the marker will be marking the conceptual correctness of your drawing. Is it conceptually correct? Is, what is this concept? It's a cupboard. So, does this look like the face of the cupboard? Yes. It does look like it. Okay. When you look at this, it does look like this. So it's conceptually correct. Right. Then we go to the measurements. The measurements. Um, 
accepted in the correct conventions. We write the measurements on an arrow with on, on, on an arrow with two sharp points. So you have this line with two arrows. And these lines here, these lines that are cutting here, are the lines that are simply telling us that the measurement is from this end to that end. Then you cut, you cut you must do this neatly with your ruler and your arrow has uh, your, your 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 arrows have sharp points then we you write your measurements only in value you don't write the units 900 we know 900 will be millimeters but you don't write millimeters on the drawing and where do you write the value you write it on top of the arrow on top of the arrow you see this arrow goes from here to there it's vertical so the measurements are on the left side for the horizontal one the measurements will be on top we know the dimensioning lines that 1200 millimeters is from the bottom to the top and why do we have two lines we have two lines in this drawing it is credible it is conceptually correct because when you look at this cupboard you have the inside line there's the inside line that is formed by the doors and you have the outside line which is the frame to which the doors are attached so our 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 drawing is correctly drawn we have the outline that indicates the outside the border okay of the cupboard and we have this inside line which is indicating what the doors okay so our cupboard has been properly reflected in this two-dimensional drawing and then we write the measurements we write the measurements. Remember I told you about scale also. There is no scale here. Probably there wasn't any instruction that uh, you, you must also write the scale. You may be instructed to write the scale too. So when you write the scale, you are indicating that so many, one millimeter on the drawing is representing how many millimeters on the real object in this case the real object is the cupboard so it's very big it doesn't fit in this drawing so there has to be a scale okay and normally in drawings you need to have a scale to say as you are saying this is 1200 millimeters but this is the measurement on the on the drawing. What is the scale between the drawing and the real object? Okay, so when you are being assessed on this, those are the items or the criteria that the marker will be looking for. You have to show competency in this in these skills practice them check your your sasso in Zalo workbooks and do those exercises okay right now let us look at these uh, fellows in this picture i did mention the i did mention the 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 the, the planes but now imagine the planes to be a room, okay? This is a room against which we see, you see the walls of this room, are the planes against which we see this piano, okay? We see these three children in this picture. There's Jeff there, there's Sarah and there's Vusi. 
they are seeing the piano from different angles, okay? Can you tell me which view is Geoff seeing? This is the piano they're looking at. Which view is Jeff seeing? Do you have any learners in grade seven here? Let me see you. Grade seven, why are you so quiet? Are you sad? Are you sleepy? Modiehi. You are writing tests next week. So I wonder why everybody is so quiet. They are seeing, Jeff is seeing the top view, the top view. So Jeff is the one who's going to draw the top view only, okay? Because he cannot see the other sides. He cannot see the other views. So he'll only see, he'll, he'll only see the top. That is what he will draw, okay? And then Sarah, what is Sarah seeing? What is Sarah seeing? What is Sarah seeing? Grade seven, what is Sarah seeing? The front view. Okay, I keep losing track of the comments. Okay, and Vusi obviously is seeing there the side. Now, you in grade seven will be like these characters because in grade seven, we are supposed to draw one side of the object. So, Vusi will only draw the left side. And he will not draw the whole piano. He'll only draw two-dimensional view of this left side. He will draw this. And Sarah will draw this only. And Jeff will draw this only. Okay? So, you understand now two-dimensional drawing. You only draw one side not in two, not in three dimensions, but in a flat, in a flat uh, kind of projection, right? This is what they will draw. This is what they will draw. Who is going to draw this part? Who is going to draw this part? Which part is this and who is going to draw it? This one. Which part is it and who is going to draw it? Don't see your chat. Who's going to draw it? This part, 
Which part is it? Tell me which part is it of the piano? This one, I wish you could just unmute yourself and talk, you know? Right, this part. What part is it? What view is this? It is the top view. And Jeff is going to draw this only because from the top, he only sees this and these keyboards. And Vus is going to draw this and um, Sarah is going to draw the front part. Only two dimensional, not the whole piano, only what they see. Even if they are given the piano, even if they can be given the piano, if they are given the whole piano to draw like this, and they are given instructions to say, draw only the top part of the piano, they must be able to draw only the top part. That is what normally happens in our assessments. We are given a 3D object and we are given a, an instruction to say, draw only this part, okay? So you only draw two-dimensional flat drawing of what you are required to draw. Right, so this will be the two-dimensional drawing of the piano. Right. In your design process, you do working drawings. I want you to remind me, at which stage of the design process do we do drawings, working drawings? I know that in the design stage, you do freehand sketches. When do you start to do working drawings? I'm looking for your chat. Ebo, where's the chat? When, in which stage of the design process do you do the working drawing or the final drawing? Hmm? I can't see your chat. So it is in the making stage. Remember, in the design stage, you do the freehand sketches and you choose, the cho you choose one idea and you call it the chosen idea. That is one freehand sketch. Then you develop that freehand sketch and you make a working drawing. Now let us look at working drawings. What are working drawings? A working drawing is an accurate drawing that shows the real sizes. Now you also use the scale there. You also use the dimensioning. Remember the dimension has the measurements. Solid lines are used to show the visible edges of objects on drawings. Remember when I started teaching you drawing, I made mention of the types of lines. The solid line or the outline, it is used to show the, 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 the visible edges of objects. Dash lines are used to show the hidden objects. The dash line is what we also call the hidden detail line. Just like you use a language such as English to communicate with others, sketches and drawings are a language. That is why we have to use a language that other people who speak the same technology, like, technological language like us can understand what we are drawing there. Now, uh, 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 the language of drawing is universal. Hmm? When I draw something, use the correct drawing conventions, okay? Drawing conventions um, are, are, are the language of drawing. We draw in technology, we draw in many fields of technology. 
every field of technology has its own language. Like in the mechanical systems and control, we have mechanical systems and control uh, graphic symbols. In electrical uh, drawings, we, uh, um, um, like the, the, the second drawings, we must use the correct symbols, graphic symbols for those graphic, for, for those uh, um, electronic and electric components. Okay? Just imagine, like now you can understand what I'm saying because I'm speaking a language that you know. I'm speaking English. Now, in drawing, we must speak this, the correct drawing language. That drawing language is called drawing conventions. So that another person who speaks the same language can read what I have drawn here. And they can know what I mean by the things that I have drawn. Do you understand me? Now, um, the dimensions are shown with a thin dimension line with arrows at both ends. They are drawn a little bit far away from objects. When you dimension your drawing, you see here are your dimension lines. Here are your dimension lines. You leave a space. You don't just draw your arrow against the drawing. You leave a space, okay? A space of about a centimeter, okay? That is 10 millimeters. Leave that space and then you draw the dimension line. Don't bring it too close to the drawing. Okay, dimensions are shown with a thin dimension line with arrows at both ends. They are drawn a little bit uh, away from objects. Extension lines which do not touch objects show you what is being measured. measured. The extension lines, let me show you those extension lines. They are these, okay? These are extension lines. These are extension lines. They show you what is being measured. We know that this 1,200 millimeters is from here to here because we have these extension lines. Inside the extension lines, we have the arrows. Okay. Um, extension lines which do not touch the subject show you that show you what is being measured. So when you have drawn your drawing like this you are sure that you will get full marks for your drawing. But every time you attempt to draw something, listen carefully to the instruction. Just like in the design process, before you start sketching those ideas, you must listen carefully to the client, the one who has a problem. You must listen very carefully to what they are saying. You must listen to the specifications because their specifications are determining what you are going to draw. So even in a, in a test, you will listen to the instruction, read the instructions carefully so that you will hear what the examiner wants you to write, to draw. Then you draw that according to the specifications that you were given. The use of lines. Use thin, faint lines for guidelines, such as the lines for a guide box. You use thin, thick, faint lines to show the outside edges of an object, such as the edges you can see from the front. Okay, the thin, faint lines, those are the guidelines. We call them constraint lines. Okay? Then, when you are drawing your box, then you will darken those lines. Show the edges using the outlines. Use a solid line to show these edges. A dimension line has small arrows at each end. These arrows touch small extension lines so that 
to, uh, to show where the length starts and where it ends. Dash lines show hidden detail of the drawings. This is just a reminder of the types of lines that you are using. Right. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This is the dashed line. It shows that the plunger is inside the syringe. So it's a hidden detail line because where is this plunger? It is inside the syringe. Okay. And then this 320, we know that it is the measurement. This is the extension line. So it is the dimensioning of this syringe. It is correctly dimensioned. So I know that in your mini pet in, in term one, in your practical assessment task, you did draw, you did make an oblique drawing of the syringe. Okay? So you are supposed to measure it. You are supposed to reflect the measurements. Right. This drawing is accurate, so we call it a scale drawing. It is four times smaller than the real pump. Okay, this is supposed to be a bicycle pump, actually, not even a syringe. We say it is drawn to a scale of one is to four because it is four times smaller than the real pump. That means if you measure the length of the outer tube of this drawing, it will be four times smaller than the outer tube of the real pump. Because we cannot put the whole pump on paper, we have to reduce it, but you must indicate in the scale how much did we reduce the pump. Okay, so this is application of drawing conventions. And these are the instruments. I have shown you this before. These are the instruments. Now, I want you to note this. When you draw oblique, this is an oblique drawing. When you draw oblique, ensure that this slanting line is half the distance. It is half the distance. If the box in real life, maybe you are given a box. I love giving boxes. You make the box and you draw it. When you have your box in front of you and you are asked to measure it, you measure the box. But when you make the oblique drawing of that box, this slanting line at an angle of 45 degrees, because this is a 45 degrees set square. It is half the distance. If it is 60 millimeters, then it will be 30. Remember that about oblique drawings. And I have talked to you about these instruments, you already know them, the T square and the 45 degree set square. I love the 45 degree set, set square because um, the, the, um, the, the T square, because this 45 degrees set square is, is sliding, is sliding on it. So this vertical line is truly vertical because this set square is being held in position by the T square. Okay. Now, this is how you construct your drawings. In grade eight, you do oblique drawings. Okay. In your oblique drawing, this is a square grid. I love grids because they assist you. Now, you have this one face drawn at, uh, uh, you know, if I, I were to draw this face only, it will be a two-dimensional drawing. Okay, but now this is a three-dimensional drawing. How did you do it? We started by drawing this two-dimensional drawing, and we put our T-square this way, and we put our... 45 degrees set square here, and we drew this line, okay? And then we know that from here to there, it is half the measurement, okay? But still, looking at this vertical line, this is still at an angle of 45 degrees, okay? And also, when you look at this line, in relation to this vertical line, it is still at an angle of 45 degrees. And then you have the measurement, it comes to there, and then you join the two sides. Do you know how you, how, why you battle with your, with your uh, uh, oblique drawings? Is that 
you, you forget that you have to have this, this measurement. You have to do it in half, not the full measurement. So that is how you get your, 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 your oblique drawings wrong. So this will help you to remember how to draw your oblique drawings. The length and the height are drawn as horizontal and vertical lines, okay? Right, the length and the height. So that is how you draw your cube in oblique drawing. Okay, and using the correct dimensioning, this is an open box. Okay, so that there is how you dimension. If you can be given specifications to draw this, this is how you will draw it. There's your tail line showing you those edges that you cannot see and the correct dimensioning and the scale. This scale, it simply means one millimeter on the drawing represents two on the real object. Thank you very much. You did, uh, today you did your um, grade seven drawings. Um, we have done even the single point perspective and um, we have done yeah, the, the, the finer touches on our drawings. And the new one that you did today is a two dimensional drawing. Okay, as you progress with your grades, you will know that um, it is orthographic projection. You will always use the word orthographic projection, but today you are smart grade seven because you know it, but it is a skill that you start learning from grade seven. Thank you very much, grade seven.